There's some things I haven't said about the Kent Hovind issue. Um, I haven't talked about it in video because I wasn't sure how to even react to it. I thought it'd be a good time for me to really, really think things over how I want to deal with it because it's such an intense subject matter and topic. Some things out there that a lot of the audience do not know. I've uh, off and on been talking to Sandra Hovind, and I thought about bringing it up with her, but something in me just kept saying, no, 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 just let it go, let it pass. But some things happened with Kent Hovind and the other side that has really, really bothered me to the point where it got me questioning and having to repeatedly pray to God and ask for wisdom and strength and answers. How should I deal with this? And here's the problem. Here's what I've been dealing with personally and this internal struggle that I've been going through. Kent Hovin lied to me. He straight up lied to me about some very serious subject matters and I have a feeling that the reason why he did it was he was afraid of dealing with the criticism and perhaps he felt like his back was against the wall and he didn't know how to deal with his haters as well as those who had valid criticisms against him. He just didn't know what to do. And I felt like, could I help him? Would I be able to get him through some of the things? But unfortunately, there were some things that were said that I just cannot get out of my mind. I can't get out of my brain, and I cannot seem to deal with internally with the struggle. And that's why I'm going to share with you what the problem is, what went down between me and Kent Hoven that I feel sick about. It's one of the things that stressed me out, caused me some anxiety, and um, made me feel like this person did not care about me or respect me in any kind of way. So there's two serious things here right off the bat. The first thing, which to me is the worst of all, was he claimed over and over on my show as, when, as well as whenever I interviewed him, he said that he talked to Sayer and the mother. Now, for those out there who don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch the prior videos, the videos before, where everyone was concerned about a missing boy. The reason why people were concerned about the missing boy is because Kent Hoven allowed a child molester by the name of Chris Jones, who has several counts, of child molestation on his record this guy was allowed to bring a boy down there sleep in the same bed with him and be on the property of Mr. Kent Hoven. Now Kent Hoven whenever we first talked he told me that that boy was fine that everything was okay even though no one had heard of the boy's health or his well-being since that time it happened. He said that he actually spoke to the mother recently and everything was okay. And he also claimed that whenever the boy got home for the first time, everything was okay. You can watch the shows and the interviews and you can see where Kent, not only on his own videos, but my videos actually stated that he has spoken to the mother, he spoke to the child and everything was okay. But none of that was true. Kent did not contact the mother. He did not contact the boy ever. And how do I know this? Because Mark Stoney, as well as Adam Lore, engaged um, these people. And Zaire says that Kent never, ever contacted his mother, nor did they contact him. Zaire didn't even know that anyone was trying to contact him. It wasn't until Mark Stoney and a few of his pals ended up spelling the name properly and they managed to be able to get a hold of him. I know that Kent did not get a hold of Zaire or his mother ever because according to Chris Jones, Kent Hovind kept on trying to get information out of Chris, but Chris 
wasn't able to produce any information, didn't even know how to be able to reach out to him. According to Kent's own people, he was trying to get someone to go out and take a picture just to prove that the boy was still alive. He was trying to do this and that, but he never actually accomplished it or succeeded. It's not like he sat on his hands and said, ah, I'm just going to straight up lie. He did actually attempt. Where he lied was when he said that he actually accomplished talking to these people, and he never did. He was trying so hard to defend his buddy Chris Jones that he claimed that Chris Jones was framed or doing some kind of Bohemian Grove thing, but that wasn't true. Years before the Bohemian Grove, Alex Jones, book, that man had accumulated over eight counts of child molestation, different events all together, different kids, different parents, different families, different scenarios. According to Mark Stoney and according to Adam, the boy did get fondled by Chris Jones. Zaire did get molested. And I can't in good consciousness to sit back and go, yeah, I respect Kent Hoven. I admire Kent Hoven, So I'm going to just let that pass. I can't. There was a child that was hurt and Kent Hoven cared more about the reputation of his poor little child molester friend than he cared about that kid. And that makes me sick because I've admired and respected Kent all my life. I never wanted to be the guy who gets on screen and says, yeah, this guy lied. This guy bullshitted. There's been some other incidences as well where Kent put me in a really tight spot. And fortunately, I was able to talk Kent out of doing some of the things that he had thought about doing. Kent said, Brett, what do you think if I made a video where I went after Mark Stoney and um, accused him of child molestation or something like this with his own daughter? I said, no, 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 Kent. That is a terrible idea. This is awful. The reason why people are coming after you, Kent, is because you actually let a real sex offender come to your property and spend a night in a bedroom with a baby. You allowed that to happen. Making lies up and accusing Mark Stoney or trying to dirty up his reputation bad. Before Kent came up with that idea, he was originally on my show where he said some pretty damning things about Mark Stoney. He said that Mark Stoney... Being that Mark Stoney was a soldier who served his country, Kent said that the guy got discharged dishonorably and that he was mentally ill and crazy and all that. Almost exactly uh, word for word what he said about Cindy Lincoln, saying that she was crazy, saying that she was mentally ill, saying that she was bipolar. And let's keep in mind, I do suffer from bipolar and manic depression. I do have depression issues, so I know what it's like. But Cindy went to the doctor and they diagnosed her as not having mental illness or bipolar. And instead, I believe what she showed was she has PTSD um, from the interaction engagement that she had with Dow and Ken Tovin, but not bipolar manic depression. Mark was honorably discharged from the military, folks. Mark didn't do anything wrong to the military, and he never molested any kind of kids. But Kent was so angry and so infuriated at the fact that Mark Stoney, as well as many, many others on social media, was coming after him, he was willing to fib about that. To make matters worse, I'm absolutely convinced that Chris Jones actually created sock accounts on YouTube and then continuously attacked my videos Every time Chris Jones was brought up, this guy would come along and basically try to say, oh, I thought you believed in God. Don't you believe that child molesters should be forgiven? Don't you think that they should get a pass? Oh, how dare you guys attack Kent? Oh, look, the missing kid was found that wasn't missing at all. It was clear to me that this was Chris Jones. 
Chris Jones is not only a child molester, but he's an idiot who's extremely paranoid and thinks that the world's after him. He thinks that the system screwed him over because he had to go to prison for doing the shit that he did to little kids. And he's ignorant, he's messed up in every kind of way, and decided to make YouTube accounts where he just continued to come after me over and over and over again and try to stir the pot. And of course, he sees Kent Hovind as a friend, so he was trying to make Kent look good and try to make everybody else like an idiot. After we revealed that Zaire was alive and that he was okay and that he actually appeared on the show, Chris Jones revisited the uh, comments board and started saying, Oh, look, the boy's alive. All those things you said about Chris and Kent are blah, 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 blah. Chris Jones is not only a child molester, a sex offender with eight counts of this crap, but he's a damn liar and he's manipulated Kent repeatedly. But unfortunately, because Kent has lied to me and said some things, I don't know how far down the rabbit hole this manipulation and taking advantage goes. And I don't give it about what some of you Christians out here say. Oh, he saved a bunch of souls. He did this. He did that. But you think that that's okay for a child molester to be on there. You're no better than the Catholic Church. You're no better than these Christian organizations that try to protect child molesters while shaming the hell out of the victim or trying to get the victim to be silent or shut the hell up or claiming everything's okay when it's not. See, one of the reasons why this shit makes me so ill, besides being lied to by someone I respect and admired, I actually was abused as a child. I was actually hurt by people that I trust and care about. And for people, after I've told them about my testimony and my experience, try to put me in a position where I'm to protect somebody who's done things like that, is disgusting, it's hateful, and it's right there along with the devil and what the devil's about. I've decided that if I lose friends over this, if I lose subs and views, I don't give a shit. At least I know in my heart that I'm trying to do right by God and right by myself internally. I cannot continue to go to sleep at night knowing that I was lied to over and over and over again. Some of you out there, you've said things like, Brett, you seem like you flip-flop. I was having a very deep internal struggle with this. Should I turn on this guy that I've always cared about and respected and admired and support this group? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I guess at this point, it doesn't even really matter. It doesn't matter because the fact is... No matter how much I did respect and admire this person, they obviously did not have any respect for me, and they did not care. And those people out there who kept on making justifications and excuses for why that went down the way it did, where they put a blind eye to a missing child, to someone who actually was molested, according to their own story, the fact that you did that tells me everything I need to know that you truly do not believe in Jesus Christ and you don't give a rat's ass about God because you would have never done something like that if you believed that you were doing right by God. And that's how I feel about it. So see you later for those out there who are like, oh yeah, Brett's a buddy of Kent Hovind or Brett's supporting this or Brett King's supporting that. No, I support the truth. I'm on God's side. And I felt like what happened here was had nothing to do with God. It was not good for me at all. It made me sick. So that's it. That's it. Goodbye, Kent Hovind. Goodbye, to all these people who've been up my ass over and over, goodbye to the haters, goodbye to the critics. I'm going to go on making my videos. I'm going to continue to worship God the way I do it, the way I serve God. And I'm not going along with any of these crazy people anymore. To me, it is like a cult.
that you will protect and you will damage people as far as you could possibly go, yet claim to be wearing the mask of righteousness and justice of God. To hell with that nonsense. The boy was hurt. The boy was damaged. And nobody but myself, Mark Stoney, and Adam Lohr reached out to that child. This is unforgivable, unacceptable, and I'm done. The only way my views will change about Kent Hovind is if he makes a public video and he apologizes for lying to me, lying about Mark Stoney, and pulling some of the shit that he did, and I want to hear a full apology to Zaire and his mother. Oh, one other thing. All that stuff about his mother not wanting him to be on video or on camera because they didn't want drama. All lies. That's all bull. Why? Because Kent never actually talked to them. That was just an excuse on why it was that he was never going to contact them and get them on camera in the first place. He made it their fault why they wouldn't give proof to get him off the hook. He never actually talked to them, so the story about, oh, the mom doesn't want the drama or social media problems, oh, absolute nonsense. So, that's that. And that's all I got to say. I wanted to read the comments. <clears throat> Pinned by God TV Radio. Kent Hovind lied and defended Chris Jones, a lying, manipulative pedophile. Brett Keane, again, God TV Radio. This kills me to do this, but it's the truth. God calls us to do the right thing even when it hurts. Simon Loki, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Faithful, I apologize, I thought this posted. My battery died before it finished. Brett, here it is, better late than never. This was put out two hours ago, and you have 11 thumbs up and only two comments. Yours. I couldn't listen until now. Perhaps everyone is stunned, or because in the past you said you were done and made judgment calls. In the past, no comments have been made. Personally, I think those statements were premature and may have caused and may have been caused by public pressure. I don't know. I am sorry it hurt you to do this. Growth in Christ comes with growing pains, much the same way children get growing pains during growth spurts. However, I am thankful you were willing to do the right thing when you finally knew what the right thing was. I will comment. It took you a long time to reach your conclusion and also the final few statements. A lot went into what you said and I understand the basis for what and why you said some things. And I didn't understand the why not of others. However, you reached the right conclusion to the matter. How you said what you did to come to the final few minutes does not concern me. I do not have to understand the way your mind processes things. You reached the correct end and that is all that matters. That you, and this is a quote from the video that Kent, sorry, that um, Brett Keane's monologue that we just heard. Quote, that you, Kent Hovind, will protect and damage people as far as you could possibly go, yet claim to be wearing the mask of righteousness and justice of God. End quote. Thank you, exclamation mark. 
This was judging the situation and the man Kent Hovind righteously. This is the same exact conclusion so many reached through struggles not unlike your own. Brett, I have been praying for you, asking Jesus to reveal himself to you, all the while seeing instability in things you say. Hopefully this is a turning point in your Christianity toward finding absolute truth. Jesus is that truth. It is in finding a closer relationship with him that you will eventually find and understand the depth of absolute truth. Hopefully you will not back up on what you now know as truth and facts and go forward without remorse for the hours and the struggles for the past several weeks. If you learned well lessons which will bring you closer to Jesus, it was worth every pain, every phone call, every broadcast, and every minute. I will continue to follow your monologues as time permits because I care about the man Brett Keen, not the broadcasts faithful. From Aiden, good on you for doing this, Brett. I'm sure this isn't easy, but the fact you call Kent Mr. Hovind rather than Doc means a lot and shows that you have seen the truth. Jesus explains, yes, Brett, It was obvious that you were having a struggle who to believe because Kent has a convincing way to make people believe his lies. Justin, yes, Kent is a liar, a habitual liar. Why is this not obvious to everyone? Just because he says stuff you don't like to hear. Don't you know the words of the devil are sweet to the ear? Faithful. Justin, even though someone may know the fact, does not always mean it's easy to sort through.